Hi, I'm Zubin Pratap, and many of you had a conversation with me this week about the one-on-one -on -one coaching that I had offered. So what I thought I'd do today is summarize for some of you who are wondering what to expect in the coming weeks, but also just summarize for those of you who've already spoken with me, the key themes that I've been able to pull out from the dozen plus one-on-one -on -one conversations I've had last week. For example, I would say the top three themes are one, imposter syndrome, two, where do I begin? And three, once I begin, what all do I need to know? Do I do this? Do I do that? Do I do all of it? And the shiny object syndrome. Oh, there's that tool I want you to learn. Oh, there's that framework that everyone's talking about. Do I do X? Do I do Y? Do I do X and Y? It was really interesting because all of these things were things that I experienced. Looking back, I think the breakthrough for me was when that I happened to meet someone who became my, my mentor and who made a lot of the decisions for me. And when you think about it, that's really what a structured environment does, right? If you go to university, a lot of the decisions are made for you. It's also very standardized. The same thing with boot camps. All the decisions are made for you. You're given a curriculum that you have to follow. You're given the structure, you're given the time. But what happens for many of you who can't afford either the time or the money, probably both, to go to even a boot camp, even if it's just three months long? Does that mean there's no hope for you? Absolutely not. I firmly believe that there is a way forward for you and you can do it yourself. But that's perhaps something that we can talk about in a separate video. For today, I think I'd just like to summarize the key learnings that I've had from you and the key ideas that I've shared with many of you about these top three themes. Theme number one, imposter syndrome. Unfortunately, there's no way of getting around that. My personal view is that imposter syndrome is like your shadow. You just have to walk with it for the rest of your life. But you do not have to be always terrified of it. It makes no sense to constantly try and battle it. It's actually much easier to manage it. Or if you can get to that stage, to ignore it, which is the stage where I try and get myself to. Now, there are some days, to be clear, even recently, where I really felt I was the dumbest person in the room. And you know what? In some senses, I was. I knew the least in the room. And that's okay. That's actually a privilege because being the dumbest person in the room means there's only one way you can go and that's up. There's only opportunity there for you. And nobody else is actually judging you for being the dumbest person in a room full of smart people. So being the dumbest person in the room is a great thing. It's an opportunity and it's the only way you will get a lot better. That kind of reframing of the context makes you feel a lot better. In that situation, feeling like an imposter is natural, but it's not helpful. The helpful thing to do is say, okay, I feel like I don't know anything, and that's probably true at this point in time, but tomorrow I'll know something. From these people, I will learn, I will get better. There will be others who will sit in the room with me one day and feel like imposters as well, because I've now learned something and they're starting out. This is the cycle of how it goes. So learn to manage it, learn to trust yourself and believe that between today and tomorrow, there will be enormous learning if you focus on the learning and not focus on fighting the imposter syndrome. Manage it. Number two, where do I begin? That is a question that is very, very difficult to answer, given that we live in a world where there's far too much information. In fact, we have so much information now that I would argue that information is like a commodity it has no real value or price anymore. That's why it's free. Now we live in a world where information is not good enough. We need insight. We need an actionable plan. We need guidance and direction. That is why there's no point having a ton of big data if you can't extract analysis and insight from it. It's the same thing with free information. You have so much free information that it's actually counterproductive. It's a distraction. It is a source of confusion. It is definitely, from what I've heard from many of you, a source of being overwhelmed. So therefore, we need to shift our idea of how we deal with this information. The question is, what is the minimum amount of information that is useful to you? Unfortunately, we are not all in a position, in fact, very few of us can actually sift out what we should pay attention to and what we should not pay attention to. That is exactly what boot camps and colleges and everything else do for you. They tell you what to pay attention to and take away a whole lot of problems around, do I need to do that? Do I not need to do that? All those decisions are taken away for you. 
But if you don't have the time and the money to do a degree, and I don't think it's necessary, or even do a boot camp, which means taking time away from work, losing income, plus paying a lot of money, you can do it yourself. But you do need a coach or a mentor who will guide you and take away the entire class of distractions that would otherwise fight for your time and fight for your attention. Keep in mind that if you're trying to teach yourself, your biggest, most valuable resource is not your money, it's your time. Because you have less of it than someone who's doing it full time. You have less of it than someone who's getting a formal degree. Your most valuable resource is your time. And so trying to figure out where to begin is something you should absolutely get help for. And then the final thing is, what do I learn? Do I look at that shiny object? Do I look at that fancy framework? This blog is telling me that I should do this. That one is telling me react. The other one's telling me view. Do I do CSS tailwind? Do I do something else? All of these, in my opinion, are distractions. The real question is, what do your goals require you to learn? Now, you again may not be in a position to answer that properly because you don't know when you're starting out everything that needs to be known. When you're starting out, it's really hard to answer these questions. The ability to answer the question of whether I should use this tool, this language, this framework, should I even bother to learn it? Should I learn the backend stuff? Should I learn only the front end stuff? All of this, these are decisions that you need a little bit of experience to be able to make properly. That's why we have managers who tell the team, well, we should use this tool or this technology for that because their experience has taught them that. You cannot expect yourself to know these things this early. Again, you're not given a, a standard curriculum. Once again, the solution is to find a coach or a mentor, someone who can train you and guide you as to what your specific goals require you to learn. It has to be tailored to your goals. Why? If you learn a generalist thing, you will spend at least three years, like they do at university, teaching you a little bit of everything. That is not helpful anymore. That world of standardized skills is gone. Today, micro skills is everything. Learn exactly what you need to learn to get to your next goal and then keep stacking on top of that. Of course, that is a very easy thing to say and a hard thing to do, but it is possible. You do not have to spend tens of thousands of dollars on it. Spend a few thousand dollars on a good coach or a good mentor, you will get it done. Don't forget, your most important resource is not your money, it's your time. The more time you spend being frustrated, the more time you spend being overwhelmed, the more time you spend being confused, the more likely you are to quit. Now, I want you all to think about one thing. Your employer, whoever you work for, has a, an hourly rate for you. Just think about it. You have to value your time exactly the way your employer does, if not more. I would say more. Put a dollar value on your time. Work out exactly how much one hour is worth to you in dollars. It'll feel weird because we're not used to valuing the time. But it's very important that you do this. The moment you do that, your life will change. Because every decision, you can then put a dollar value on what it means. For example, if you want to teach yourself HTML and CSS, and you spend six months doing it, you know that that's about half a year salary. Even if you quarter it and say quarter year salary, fine. Now ask yourself, if you paid someone $1,000 or $500 or $2,000, to help you learn which parts of the HTML and CSS ecosystem you should focus on to get started and to help point you to the right resources to do that. And let's say that only costs you $1,000, right? Is that less than a quarter year's salary or is that less than half a year's salary? You will find that your time has a lot of value in it. But because we don't value our time, we spend it as though it's free and we only focus on the free information without getting the help. Once again, I ask you all to think about valuing yourself the way your employer does. Your time is not worth zero. Your employer doesn't think so, so why should you? Now, these are the big themes that I found this week that I've talked about. I'm sure they're gonna come up again. I would really, really love to continue this conversation with you, and I think maybe I'll produce some more videos that talk about this in greater detail. I hope this was a value to you. I'm really, really learning a lot from you. And I think it's a wonderful thing that so many of you are trying to make a better life for yourselves. I'm filled with admiration because that takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of grit. And not everybody has the time and the money to go to a formal education process. But remember, you are investing in yourself. And you have to invest to get a return on an investment. If you invest zero, your return will be zero. All the very best.